Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. So we're now a month away from the NHL season. So basically, every single team's roster is locked in at this point. I'm going to assume that most of the restricted free agents are going to end up signing with their team, whether that's come opening night, whether that's a month into the season. Most of the rosters are locked in at this point. So today, I wanted to run through every single team's biggest weakness. I wanted to be a little bit of a, a nitpicker, a critic today, and we are going to be doing exactly that, going through every single team and what their weakness is. I'm not just going to say like forwards, defense, goal. Well, I might say goaltending for some teams, but I'm going to be more specific. Like, do they not have a second line center? Do they not have a legit first line center after their top pair defensively? Does it fall off a cliff? We're going to go through the weaknesses. And up first, we got the Carolina Hurricanes. And for them, it, this has been the problem for like the past three to four years. They don't have a second line center. They, I'm not saying that they would have won the Stanley Cup the last two to three years if they had a second line center, but they have been running out like Jesperi Kakaniemi or Jack Drury as their second line center the last couple of seasons. And it's, it's just not good enough. You look at recent Stanley Cup champions, and they have been solid, not only with an elite first-line center, which the Carolina Hurricanes do have in Ajo, but also a second-line center. Carolina doesn't just not come remotely close. They probably have, in terms of Kakini Yemi, if he's your second-line center, he might be like a bottom six or seven second-line center in the entire NHL. So for an actual playoff team like that, it's unacceptable. For the Ottawa Senators, heading into the offseason, it would have been goaltending, but clearly they addressed that by getting Linus Olmark. So now I'm going to go with special teams when looking at them last season. They had the fourth worst penalty kill in the entire NHL, as well as the 10th worst power play. I expected their penalty kill to not be that good, but I was a little bit surprised at some of the offensive talents that they have, that they had the 10th worst power play. They got to get that to at least league average. I think we can agree the goaltending is going to take a massive step, but the special teams need to be much better as well. The Chicago Blackhawks, they don't have a legit second top tier forward to, par to partner with Connor Bedard or have as your second line center. They have Bedard and then like a bunch of good middle six guys for the most part. You look at someone like Tara Vinen, Bertuzzi, Hall, Kershev. Outside of Bedard, they're really lacking star talent. They have, they have a lot of problems. Don't get me wrong. They're going to be like a 65-point team, but in terms of their clear weakness, they have no number two forward to really be able to generate offense, a lot of offense on their own. The Anaheim Ducks, I'm going to go with the goalie tandem when looking at Dostal, unless he takes a massive step. I think that they're yet again probably going to have a bottom eight goalie tandem in the entire NHL. Him and John Gibson, we've been talking about it for years. John Gibson just hasn't been the same goaltender compared to 2017, 2018 when he really burst on the scene. So right now heading into the season, I would say goaltending is probably their number one problem. The Washington Capitals, I'm going to go with their second line. I think their first line is going to be serviceable. I don't really love Tom Wilson, but Dylan Strome and Alexander Ovechkin could be around 70-ish points. But that second line, when looking at what their projected second line is and what they did last season, you have Connor McMichael on the left side. He had a solid 33 points at 23 years old. I think he's going to be a good player. Is he a legit second liner on an actual playoff team? Not so sure. Pierre-Luc Dubois, 40 points last year. Yes, maybe he can return to 2023 form. And then you got Andrew Mangiapane, who yes, in the 2022 season, the dude scored 35 goals, but the last two seasons, he's had 43 points and then 40 points last year. So you have two 40-point guys and another 33-point guy as of right now on your second line that doesn't scream even a playoff team in the Eastern Conference. So their second line line really needs to bring it, especially when you compare it to like my New York Islanders, Kyle Palmer, 30 goals last year. Brock Nelson was like 70 points. They need, they need to get a better second line. Those guys need to step up like they potentially could. I'm not saying that they won't, but right now it looks like a clear weakness. The Tampa Bay Lightning, their entire bottom six is a pretty big weakness. This has been kind of their weakness the last couple of seasons in part because they've been paying some guys big money, but don't get me wrong. They, they have a lot of good value contracts like Kucherov and Point, but when looking at the Lightning's bottom six next year, it's shaping up to be uh, Nick Paul, who I do like a lot. I think he's actually a pretty solid third line center, but outside of that, Connor Sheary, Isamont, Gergeson, uh, Glenn, Den Glenn on Denning and Chafee, it's it's pretty brutal bottom six when looking at it compared to other playoff teams. The Minnesota Wilds, I'm going to go with goaltending. Gustafson, was he a one hit, one hit wonder in that 2023 season? Because last year he wasn't that good. As well as Marc-Andre Fleury is going to be 40 years old come November. So that goaltending tandem really needs to get back on track if the Wilds want to be anywhere close to a playoff team because last year they missed it by like 11 points. The Seattle Kraken, they don't have a star forward. They have, they have a bunch of very like solid first liners, very good second liners. I think their forward core overall is like 
below average, but they don't have any true difference maker. Yes, Jared McCann has scored 40 goals in a season, but I think he's just a he'd be a good first liner on most most playoff teams. They don't have that one star piece that you usually look look for when it comes to a playoff team or when it comes to a team that can really go deep in the playoffs. The New York Rangers, I'm going to go with their bottom four defensemen. I like Adam Fox. I like Keandre Miller, but after that, it gets pretty shaky. Jacob Truba, obviously. Then you got guys like Zach Jones, Braden Schneider, as well as Ryan Lindgren took a bit of a step back last year defensively. So that defense score scares me a little bit. Their bottom six also, and there's overall even strength play scares me a little bit. But if they were to get eliminated in the first or second round, I think that defense score as of right now would be the reason why. The Boston Bruins, even though they got Elias Lindholm, in the year 2024, based on the way he's been trending, 82 points, then 62 points, then 44 this season, he's not a number one center. I still don't think the Boston Bruins have a number one center. Yes, you can maybe say that they're three centers deep with Lindholm, uh, Zaka, and Coyle. You could say like the overall average of that makes it okay, but when it comes to playing in the Eastern Conference with all these amazing first-line centers, you run into an Alexander Barkov and he can absolutely eat you alive, they still do not have that number one center. The Nashville Predators, I'm going to go with their bottom four defense. I really like Yossi. I really like Braden Shen, Shea. That's probably a top 10 defenseman duo in the entire NHL. But after that, you got Jeremy Lazan, uh, Carrier, Spencer Statsny, who's not related to uh, Paul Statsny or Peter Statsny. And then you got Luke Shen. It's a pretty underwhelming group for a team that should be trying to contend at a high level heading into next season. The Calgary Flames, it's the exact same thing, but honestly, it's even worse when looking at their three through six for their defensemen. It's Kevin Ball, Miramanov, Jake Bean, and Paschal. It's it's. Brutal. Brutal. Destin Wolf is potentially going to have a very tough rookie season, in part because that defense core is very shallow after their top two guys, and as a result, he's going to be seeing a lot of shots on goal. The New Jersey Devils, I didn't really have like an exact position group to really target, considering the fact they did improve their defense core, they did improve their goaltending. I'm just going to say with them, some of their players lack physicality. I think they might potentially get pushed around like what we saw in that second round in 2023 against the Carolina Hurricanes. They're still kind of built in terms of their star star players on more so speed and skill and not a ton of physicality so that might be their weakness going forward the Montreal Canadiens the bottom six is pretty bad you got guys like Brandon Gallagher Dvorak Armia Anderson Jake Evans the top six actually looks pretty solid after the Patrick Line acquisition but as of right now the bottom six looks to be probably a bottom seven or eight bottom six in the entire NHL for the St. Louis Blues their entire oh no I'm this way left side of their defense is looking absolutely brutal looking like a massive weakness when looking at Nick Letty Philip Broberg and Scott Perunovic I think Perunovic and Broberg could be very solid players in two to three years but as of right now that being the left side of your defense is not anything close to playoff level the San Jose Sharks sticking with defense their entire defense core kind of stinks Jake Wallman is like their de facto number one Mark Edward Vlasic, Mario Ferraro, Cody Cece, Henry Thrun, and Jan Ruda. It's without a doubt the worst defensive core in the entire NHL. My New York Islanders, the penalty kill is our biggest weakness heading into this season. When looking at us last year, we were dead last in the entire NHL. It was a little bit better under Patrick Waugh, I believe, but still 71.5%. By, by, like, it was by far the worst by like 1%. If we can shore that up, I think we're going to be a playoff team most likely. The Detroit Red Wings, going back to some other teams, I'd say after Mort Sider, it's pretty brutal. That's probably their weakness is the defense core past Mort Sider. Simon Evanson maybe can pop. Ben Chirot, uh, Petri, Hull. It's not good right now. For the Winnipeg Jets, I would say right now they're missing like a solid two-way number two defenseman behind Josh Morrissey. I like some of the guys that they do have. I think Dylan DeMello's a very good defensive defenseman, but they need someone to kind of take some of that load off of Josh Morrissey. We thought maybe a couple years ago Neil Pionk could be that. Clearly he is not that. So as a result, I think they're me they're missing a guy that can play 22, 23 minutes a night and really offer some offense as well as being solid defensively. For the Winnipeg Jets, the LA Kings it's got to be the goalie tandem after Darcy Kemper had an 890 last year. Dave Riddick could potentially be solid. He was solid for them last year. I'm not sure how consistent big save Dave is going to be at like 32, 33 years old. The Philadelphia Flyers, it is their center core when looking at Sean Couture. has not looked like the same player. On top of a guy like Morgan Frost, I think he's a solid middle sixer, but is he a legit second line center? I don't really think so. They have some solid wings, but as of right now, the center, the center is just not remotely close to a playoff level. The Buffalo Sabres, 
Bears, I'm going to go with just veteran leadership. They're, they're just such a young team that I don't think that they're going to be able to put it together, most likely for an 82-game season. They're very young. They're very raw. I think they're going to be good in two to three years. But right now, they're just too young, in my opinion. The Dallas Stars, their bottom three defensemen. I love the top three of Muir Heiskanen, Thomas Harley, Essa Lindell. But then you got Labushkin, uh, Nils Lundqvist, as well as who did they just sign? Matt Dumba. The, that's the bottom three right now. That is not good. Those those guys, if they're your number six, maybe even number five defenseman, you can live with it. But that being your fourth through six for a team like the Dallas Stars that has made back-to-back Western Conference Finals, it is very underwhelming for them. The Vegas Golden Knights, I really like their three center deep. They have one of the best three center deeps in the entire NHL when looking at Eichel, Carlson, and Hurdle. But their winger, their winger depth is not looking good after losing a lot of pieces, after losing Marcia So, after losing Manta, after losing probably Mark Stone to 40 games this season once he goes on his LTIR stint. They're going to need guys like Victor Olofsson to play a sizable role heading into next season. So their wingers are a pretty big weakness, in my opinion. The Pittsburgh Penguins, their bottom six kind of stinks when looking at it. Kevin Hayes, who they acquired, uh, O'Connor, Glass, Lazat. Ealer and Achari, nothing really special in terms of generating offense, so they're going to have to be relying on their very old top six. The Toronto Maple Leafs, exact same thing. The bottom six is looking pretty brutal. They have to have, like, even their second line, they're having Bobby McMahon on that second line. The bottom six is not looking that good heading into next season. The Utah Hockey Club, just like the Philadelphia Flyers, I'm still not sold on their center core. I think Logan Cooley is going to take another step, but is he a legit number one center on a playoff team yet? No. On top of Barrett Hayden, after having a decent 2023, went kind of back down this season. Nick Bajugstad, okay third line center, but it doesn't really scream playoff team. That three center deep, in my opinion. The Edmonton Oilers, their second pair on defense, I think what I would go for weakness. Right now, it's slated to be Darnell Nurse, who again, not nearly worth his cap hit, and then makes costly mistakes and turnovers come playoff time. As well as Ty Emberson right now is projected to be on the second pair defense. I like him as a young guy. Third pair guy on a legit contender. So as a result, I think that that second pair is not looking that good for the Edmonton Oilers. The Columbus Blue Jackets, I'm just going to go with the forward core talent. And I think that they're just too young. Obviously, big part of that was Patrick Laine wanting a trade. And of course, the tragic passing of Johnny Goudreau. But at this point, as a result of this offseason, they probably have a bottom three forward core in the entire NHL. The Florida Panthers, after Forsling and Ekblad, their bottom four of their defense. They went bar- bargain bin hunting. I think that they got some solid ads, but the fact that they're going to rely on like Kulikov to be their number three or Nate Schmidt to be their number three, it's not looking like the defense core of last year that won them the Stanley Cup, especially after losing a guy like Brandon Montour. The Colorado Avalanche it's clearly in goal. I, I don't love their bottom six. I actually think their defense core is fantastic. Past McCarantes this year, I like some of the guys that they got. Calvin DeHaan and uh, Branstrom. But the goaltending, it could be make or break for them. I don't think Georgiev was horrible outside of that first game for the Winnipeg Jets, but after a down year, he had like an 899 this season after having like a 917 the year prior. He needs to be way better. Maybe Justin, just Justice Anunnan could step up in a big way, but right now for Colorado, there's such a fall off between their forwards, defense, and then goaltending all the way down. And then lastly, for the Vancouver Canucks, I'm going to go with their bottom for defense when looking at Quinn Hughes and Philip Ronick. Great pair, top five pair, probably top three in the entire NHL, but after that, it does fall off a little bit. I still think it's not like the end of the world, but if there was a weakness for the Vancouver Canucks, maybe the weakness would be Thatcher Demko's knees. But if there was one, I think it'd be the bottom four defense. But let me know in the comments, what do you think about these picks? Who'd you, uh, who'd you move up? Who'd you move down? Do you agree with my picks? What other weaknesses do you think that some teams have? And obviously, in the next one.